Okay, so good evening and welcome uh, to General Council of uh, March 14th. Uh, I'm going to first by uh, beginning by identifying any media on the line. Hi there, Donna from the two row. Hi, good evening, Donna. Hello. Uh, are there any representatives from the Turtle Island News? I don't see any online. <clears throat> That'll lead us into our adoption of the agenda for this evening. Looking to a mover and seconder. I'll move, Sherilyn. Moved I'll by Sherilyn, second by Michelle. Are there any further questions or comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Uh, seeing or hearing none motion is carried. Um, okay, the, we do have uh, a delegation who I believe may be in the waiting room, Shirley. Can you confirm? So we have Erica Dawson and a Sean Kelly. They're both with Hydra One. Okay, perfect. So we can allow them into the Zoom. So Erica and as well as Sean are getting our dele uh, the delegation from Hydro One. There are two recommendations uh, on our agenda, um, but first uh, would like to uh, take this opportunity to welcome both uh, Eric and Sean to our general council meeting. Um, again, I'll look to them to pass or walk us through the presentation or any background information to the two uh, recommendations on the agenda. So good evening uh, and welcome to you both. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm going to pass the floor. I'm not sure, Sean, or if it's, oh, it looks like Eric is just joining us in now. Hi, Hi good evening, Erica. Sorry about that. I had butter fingers and chopped off by accident. <laughs> no problem. So just to kind of re, uh, re go uh, over um, where we have the two recommendations on our agenda. So maybe if you can uh, provide us with some background uh, information to the two items. And I'm sure there'll be uh, questions and comments uh, thereafter. So I'll, I'll pass the floor over to you and welcome to our general council meeting. Thank you, Chief Hill. I really appreciate it. Um, I just want to acknowledge that I also have one colleague with me, Sean Kelly, that's also joining. Um, uh, he is a security specialist, um, so uh, I thought that he could also join um, if there was any questions that's more technical of nature. Um, so uh, I have reached out to um, several uh, counselors and also reached out to Mike Montour um, and the environmental department regarding um, a project that's happening um, at Caledonia TS, which is located on Argyle. Um, and uh, the purpose of the project um, is due to the end of life uh, equipment that's within the substation. Uh, and uh, there is plans to uh, remove and uh, replace some volt trans, uh, transformers and uh, some failed switches in, in the station. So the work is all happening within the station. Um, the work, however, does require a long outage due to the safety of the crew that's uh, performing the work. Um, and currently the set date for that outage is June 3rd. Um, I'm working internally to um, see if I could shorten the outage as much as possible and also provide generators for the community. Right now, the power outage is uh, going to happen between 10 p.m. on Saturday, June 3rd to 8 a.m. Um, and it's really just for the um, removal and replacement of uh, the Volt trans uh, transformers within the station. Um, so I have reached out to Mike Montour and had an audience um, with Tammy and Councillor Wright. Um, and what was provided to me as advice moving forward so on the project um, is to have a, a pop-up drop-in session um, in the community for community members to learn more about the project. Right now I'm working with uh, Mike Montour for an April 17th date. 
Um, in addition, uh, we're looking to uh, provide some mail outs to the community. Um, so the power outage will uh, require a power outage for around 2000 customers in the area. So it will be a large outage. Um, so there will be uh, automatic call outs that will be happening to all the impacted customers and also sending out um, information through Canada Post um, and working with um, most likely, I think Mike Montour regarding the message that will go out to the community. Um, and a part of that message will be the invitation for the pop out, um, uh, pop up community information center. Um, the night, uh, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm just kind of <laughs> giving you the information. Um, so the night of uh, the power outage, there will be around 30 crew that will be at the station that will be performing the work. Um, and there will be uh, lights, uh, power generators, uh, some large equipment such as um, cranes. And so it will be pretty optic uh, within the community that night with the, the work that's happening at the station. Um, so another part of the work is also installing security cameras. Um, this has been a, sa uh, a safety uh, protocol that happens at all of our uh, transformer stations. We had them removed a number of years ago due to concerns about community members um, feeling that the security cameras may be facing outside of the, uh, the station. So I provided um, Tammy a diagram of what the security cameras um, view inside the, the station. And really it's for the safety of the equipment and monitoring the equipment inside because it's a, a, a live active um, electrical uh, station. Um, regarding the cameras, if there's any questions, I think Sean is the best person to ask regarding the, the cameras. Um, and um, maybe I'll leave it to there as far as the information that I could provide. Um, if there's any questions, I'm happy to take them. Okay, thank you, Nyawa, Erica, for walking us through uh, this, um, this matter. I'm sure there's many questions uh, and concerns and advice that could be further given uh, due to the sensitivity, I think, even around uh, the area that this project is in. Um, so I'll look to first begin with Audrey over to Sherry Lynn. Okay, thanks, Mark. Uh, I'd like to know how many customers it's going to affect and what size of an area you're talking about, as well as how well contained it will be with, um, it's going to be having uh, like wire around it type of thing, like a, a cage. And also our communication, communication has to be very effective and sent out early because people get wind of something and they think something may not necessarily be happening. Mm -hmm. So the more ed, in, uh, information you give us and give Caledonia and the people affected, the better. And I appreciate that, Yeah. Hey, thank you, uh, Nyawa, Audrey, for your comments. Um, I'll look to Sherry Lynn's and then maybe Erica will check in with you for any further responses from yourself. Uh, Sherry Lynn? Uh, I guess for the generators, because um, a lot of people have sub pumps, sump pumps, and for their basements not to flood <laughs> because it's very costly. And I know that you said about generators, but um, even myself, I wouldn't even know how to hook it up. <laughs> so I don't know how you would or um, the process to get the generator, but also to help individuals to hook up the generator to their house so uh, their basements don't flood. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Sherilyn. I'll just um, maybe, uh, sorry, Erica, check in with Helen as well, and then uh, I'll offer back to yourself as well. Uh, Helen, you have the floor. Yeah, um, uh, um, similar to what Audrey said, I think it's really important to let us know exactly what areas are going to impact. 
we know it's not going to impact the whole reserve, I don't think. So we need to know what areas and we need to find out, you know, if people have um, um, medical stuff where they like, mm -hmm. where they have to be hooked up to something and things like that. So we have to really be precise and where, who it's going to impact, if you can do that. Yeah, no, I think that's a great, uh, good advice as well. And Erica, I just, just in, in addition to the comments that you've already heard from other councillors, I wonder if it's also, um, you know, because if we look to the impact, uh, the impact list of customers and who, uh, you know, specifically on the territory, um, like we we want to make sure that there's they're they're okay during this project as well. So I don't know if there's, you know, any of our social supports or even yourself that can assist, you know, families over that time frame. Um, that it's out. Mm. I'm not sure if there's any areas of assistance that could happen with families. Um, I just want to bring that forward as well. So maybe I'll just uh, pass it over to yourself, Erica, for any uh, comments from the comments that you've heard from council so far. Yeah, wait for all the great questions. Um, so there is going to be roughly around 2,000 customers that will be impacted by the outage. I have provided all the addresses in the Excel spreadsheet to Mike Montour, um, along with a map. I'm happy to pass that information to um, uh, maybe Tammy to, to uh, disseminate through the council um, to know uh, exactly what that outage and the impact of the outage is, is to the customers. Um, and then one of the other questions that I wanted to um, mention is that the work is going to be happening within the station fence. Um, so there's already, it's already fenced in as far as um, the containment of the work within the fence line. Um, I imagine that there will be a lot of um, equipment um, and crew that's going to be throughout uh, where the, the Caledonia transformer station is, is located. Um, so that's something to expect. Um, as far as the process of uh, reaching out to community members ahead of time, I totally understand that uh, the earlier the notification, the better. Um, so as soon as I heard about this project, I've reached out to um, Six Nations of uh, advice of how um, we can work together in executing the both the outage and the work uh, safely for the community. Um, and so um, we will be sending a notification for review um, by council and, and I think also Mike Montour um, before we send it out through Canada Post. So that's something that I'm working on uh, next week to provide to you. Um, and then we could uh, send out the notification shortly after. There is an automatic um, call out um, that happens for all outages across the province from Hydro One, and they will also be calling the um, the customers um, from the information that we have on their billing regarding the outage. And as far as um, generators and social supports. So um, this is something that I'm still looking uh, internally about. Um, I personally have not worked on such a large outage before. So I want to make sure that uh, there is social supports um, in place. And I have requested internally for support for, to provide generators to the community, especially when it comes to um, elderly uh, care facilities or sensitive um, social um, facilities. Um, so I will take um, the process back and uh, provide uh, more uh, information of how to connect and if um, uh, some field crew can assist with um, providing uh, the, the generators and how to use the generators while they're working throughout the night um, during the power outage. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for that, uh, Erica. I see a couple of other hands being raised. Uh, first over to Audrey and then Helen. Thanks, thanks for that, Erica. Um, I, I'm wondering if you've uh, contacted the paramedics and the hospitals that are surrounding us so that um, they'll be well aware that they have to uh, bypass, in which case it could take some extra time, especially if somebody has a life-threatening uh, condition. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Um, yeah. Hey, thanks for that. Um, Helen. I'm oh, sorry, Helen, you're on mute. Sorry, Helen, you're on mute. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know what the weather is going to be like on June 3rd. Last year, if you remember, it was scorching hot in June. So I think council would look at maybe setting up, developing some kind of um, maybe a mini emergency plan of some sort to help people. It could, and what if it, what if it's storming? And like Sherry Lynn said, everybody has some pumps. So we need to plan somehow to try and plan for the weather. I guess look in the farmer's almanac. I don't know what it says for June 3rd, but the weather could be a really, really major impactor, depending yeah. on what. So maybe so that's where need, the emergency plan, I think, needs to be initiated. Maybe just even a, a short one for people. That, that's a long time to have your hydro out. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's why, yeah, the, uh, the, um, the importance of, you know, where we collaborate, Erica. So maybe I'm going to suggest to uh, Darren uh, as well as obviously we can connect with our uh, fire chief and emergency management uh, planner same person um, to come up with uh, maybe have your team work with with ours to kind of highlight some of these pieces and I just want to acknowledge uh, Nathan's comments in the chat as well as you know for the pop-up information session is looking at um, you know what type of inf information that it should there should be and how it gets um you know how we look to get it out to the community and as well to all the other matters that you um you know that you have that you've heard this evening i'm just looking also in the chat um looking from community comments to consider at, you know looking at um companies and industries who may pay lost revenue emergency, emergency plan sorry i'm just reading the comments in the chat but uh, again i think it's all entailing to this to the, the overall support yeah. Um, Erica, so maybe I'll just check in with um with Darren just after Sherry Lynn. I see Sherry Lynn has her hand raised. Yeah, I guess just one more in regarding especially um the fridge and your freezer, because a lot of our people have um uh the freezer full of meat. And you know, if we have their food <laughs> full, like even like how long can it stay for it? I know just the education on that also and yeah. just to for us like for also to work with you just a reminder don't buy a lot of groceries i guess or something <laughs> you know, yeah it, because we don't want to yeah Thanks. it's not it's it's really all about the planning right so i'm, I'm we're glad erica that you're here now because it does give us enough time to get plans you know in motion but i wanted to check in with darren to see his thoughts on this matter uh and to uh to include possibly ashley russell taylor um, in on this conversation and further coming up with the plan. Yes, uh, thanks, Chief. I yeah, I agree. Really good suggestions and, and considerations. Yeah, I was in part of I was part of the meeting with Erica as well. And um, actually, they're, they're, some of these new considerations are very very vital. So absolutely, Erica, uh, we can set up a meeting with myself, and we have kind of an ECG group, which is a subset of our previous COVID response team. Mm -hmm. So that pr will provide additional resources to to facilitate along with your along with Hydro One in terms of those additional supports. I, I think the food thing is a really important one. Mm -hmm. I know that Council Wright had indicated there's a pop up information session coming up, and maybe you could talk a little bit about that in terms of the timing, and we can bring additional confirmations and you know uh, assurances to community that these will be uh, whatever supports are available are will be available. Okay, perfect. Uh, Nyawa, thank you for that. Uh, Darren, uh, Audrey? Yeah, is our comms team working with them so that we have a united message and our surrounding um, neighboring communities, municipalities, and the credit, as well as- Yeah, I think, I think that's all entailing to the next steps from this point. Audrey is bringing everybody together to get on that, on that same page and same type of messaging and so forth. Nyawa. Yeah. yeah. Is, okay, uh, Erica is up. Oh, sorry, Melba. Yeah, some uh, people have already mentioned health concerns, and my thoughts go in that direction because uh, I think they're going to get very excited if they're not going to have hydro. 
even overnight, and rightfully so, because a lot of people have breathing problems, so oxygen needs to be in place. So I'm just wondering if they could do the delivery at least a week in advance. And the question is, are they going to hand deliver uh, directly to the individuals who are going to be affected, or are they going to put it somewhere in the community where people pick up? Those kind of things need to need to be known. And also, if it's a week in advance or more, with uh, information that's going to be uh, included, and people will have time, like you mentioned, plan. There needs to be plans that they could go overnight with someone or, or as Helen said, you know, who's all going to be involved, you know, the paramedics and ambulance, you know. Okay, so I'm concerned about the health of the people. Okay, thanks, uh, Niawa, for that uh, as well, uh, Melba. So maybe, yeah, Erica, obviously it's it's generated much more, uh, as you see, suggestions and advice. And so I think what we could do based upon the two recommendations that we have on the agenda is put a, a, a caveat to those two. As we know, we want to support this project and get it uh, further completed due to, again, the equipment uh, dated. Um, so we'll look to the caveat that uh, we come back as a group, I, I would assume, uh, once our groups uh, have touched base after this meeting to really start to iron out some of those finer details and planning. Um, and we may even have to uh, do, I would say, uh, a few meetings and then update the council uh, as we progress. So we can look to those recommendations with the caveat of, of uh, what, I've, what I've just laid out of our teams uh, collaborating and further getting on the same page of the plans and how this will all, um, all be able to get into implementation. Uh, Nathan. Yeah, with that, Chief, I think that's a great plan. And thanks, Council, for the uh, additional ideas. But I'll move the, the motion, but only first reading. We'll pass second reading after we get the plans in place. So only first reading. Sounds good. Okay, so we'll go to recommendation 4-1 then. Is that correct, Nathan, that you're moving on 4-1? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Now for that, seconder. Second by Audrey. Any further questions or comments to the motion? Yeah, I think uh, you mentioned planning, Mark. It's Melba. Yeah, we need to do our due diligence too, like the radio and our billboard yep. out here. You know, as many signs as possible. With health services has signs, you know, Gunnar has signs. So if we could take advantage of that, that would be really great in reminding our people they have to plan too. Agreed. Thanks. Yeah, so we'll definitely um, we'll we'll uh, further come back to council with those updated uh, communications plans. Um, it it's been moved. Second, just to further I, that. Sure, go ahead, Nathan. Yeah, just to further, we also provided Erica with the numbers to the radio station as well as the numbers and to get ads into the paper as well, so she can uh, follow up there as well. Perfect. Uh, thanks for that, Nathan. I have Carrie in queue next, and then over to I see Erica. Yeah, Erica, what are the times again that it's going to be out? Um, currently, it is um, uh, 10 p.m. on Saturday, Saturday, June 20, uh, June 3rd um, to 8 a.m. And currently, I'm working on shortening that outage as, uh, as much as possible. Um, and uh, so I'll let you know if there, if I am successful in shortening that um, outage and provide that information as soon as possible. We've tried so that, our best. We've so tried that 8 a.m. Oh. <laughs> is for Sunday then, eh? right? Yes. Okay. Over next. Nice. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Erica. Yeah, so definitely, obviously, could be more appreciated if, if the shorter amount of time uh, that it can take. So we'll uh, definitely look to continue our, our conversations on that front as well. Are there any further questions or comments in relation to the, mo uh, the motion? It's been moved and seconded. I'm going to go to the vote. All in favor? Any opposed? or hearing on motion is carried. Uh, the next item, again, I think it's just in terms of the the 4-2, so I think it's all in one, correct, uh, Erica, the 4-2, can therefore be resolved that six nations of the Grand River Elected Council accept uh, the presentation from Erica da Dawson as information and support the planned tower coding project scheduled for the summer 
of 2023 from Middleport to Caledonia Transformer Station. Is there anything further information or detail on this specific recommendation? Can I, can I go? Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Chief. <laughs> um, just before we get to the next project, I just wanted to double check that um, a part of the motion is um, the, the installation of the security cameras as well. I think it was over methods. Yes, it does. Okay. Um, would then, it be, mm -hmm. Sorry, and then I wanted to for you to go on to the next. Sorry, the next recommendation, which is the other project of the from okay. uh, the the tower coding. Um. So, the tower coding is being currently planned between July and August. It's a routine program um, that happens across all of our tower um, maintenance in, in, the pro in the province. Um, and the towers are just adjacent to the community. It's um, between Caledonia Junction and Middleport um, Transformer Station. And uh, over time, the sink corrodes um, just due to the exposure of the corrosive uh, environment and it leaves the uh, steel bare. Um, so what uh, the crew does is that they walk along the um, towers and they expose a little bit of the, the leg of the tower. So um, it's below and above grade and they apply basically a proxy to the towers to ensure that um, it won't rust and uh, that before any significant metal is lost. So it's really to ensure the safety and maintenance of the towers. Um, and I think that's really it with that project, Chief. <laughs> Okay, thank you for that, uh, Eric. Are there any specific questions to this recommendation for two? Kiri? It's Melba. I don't know where the I don't know where the towers are. So will will the roads be necessary to block off? Or I know where Caledonia is, but I don't know where Middleport. Erica. Yeah, it's just adjacent to the community. Um, and as far as access goes, um, there is small access roads to um, the towers. And uh, that is something that I'm to provide to Mike Montour to arrange with him, um, ensuring that the access is okay. So it shouldn't block Thank any you. roads, yeah. It shouldn't be able to block any roads or, or anything like that. Okay, is there any further follow-up, Melba? No, that's it, thank you. Okay, thanks, uh, Melba. Kerry? Yes, <clears throat> so the coding is at, at the base of the towers that you're working on mm -hmm. or the whole tower? Just the, the base. Okay, okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks, Erica, for walking us through this one. So I'm now looking for a recommendation for two for a mover uh, and seconder. I'll move that, Chief. Moved by Carrie, seconded by Greg. Are there any further questions or comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. <coughs> Okay, uh, Erica, so we'll, uh, we have a little bit of work to do on recommendation, the first one. Um, and so we'll have our teams connected again uh, and then to further update our council and community on the plans for the plan to power outage. Mm -hmm. And uh, just a follow up on that, Chief, if you don't mind, um, I, I believe that we will be looking to install the security cameras just before the project goes ahead, um, just to ensure that the monitoring within the station um, is happening before the project happens. So um, would that be something that I could work with Mike Montour on? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we could... We we could talk even further, uh, you know, just in terms of any additional, because if there's, uh, you know, looking to shortening the, the work time frame, I think that's important as well. And to continue to look at that. Yes. 
Okay, thank you all, uh, both to yourself and Sean for joining us this evening and looking forward to our next um, our next meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, have a great evening. Okay, okay cheers. Council, uh, council, I'm gonna continue moving along here on our agenda uh, this evening for general council. I was advised uh, that the minutes didn't get into your drop box. So we're gonna have to hold off on the minutes for this um, this meeting or rather the minutes of the February 28th meeting and those will be carried over to our next. Uh, so we'll have a, a, a double set of minutes there. There is a recommendation from ethics. Uh, this is in relation to uh, approving Lauren Jones's application to conduct research titled birds and bats project. I'm not sure specifically uh, who will be speaking on uh, to this one. Sorry, Shirley, can you just confirm? Hey, sorry, Chief. There's no one in the waiting room to represent it. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll just check with maybe Nathan or Michelle if they're if they have any information on this matter uh, from ethics. Yeah, apologies. Um, the the, <laughs> the there's always a kind of a disconnect between ethics and here, so we we do ask that the individual who's doing the project be invited. So I guess that didn't happen. Yeah, I think that's what, so what we'll do then, I, I was under the impression that Lauren was uh, going to be, because we have been hearing from, you know, others yeah. during this process. I know we're still ironing out this process as well, so there's still uh, changes within that, but um, maybe what we can do is just defer this item and then get her back on the agenda for the next Amazing. Meeting. Appreciate it. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for that, uh, Nathan. Uh, scheduling, so reports, again, our council reports as, um, again, oh, sorry, Helen. Oh, sorry, Helen, you're on um, mute. I have, I have some reports. Sure. Over um, to you, Helen. Well, I went to the, I was, I attended the water legislation meeting on March 6th. It was a two day meeting, but I only attended March 6th. Uh, I attended the, um, uh, AIA Housing Summit, that was for two days. That was March 7th and 8th. And I attended um, the Committee on Housing and Infrastructure on March 10th. I'll just do a brief update on the water and the AIA. I'll do the, the Housing Summit, the uh, Chiefs Committee on Housing, I'll do that next time. Because okay. I don't want to take everybody, you know, take up an hour. So the water legislation I attended on, like I said, I attended on Zoom the first day. And I will email uh, the briefing note that co-environment, co-environmental -envir section. Uh, it's a summary of the engagement session, March 6th and 7th on water and wastewater legislation to First Nations in Ontario. So I'll send out that briefing note to everyone. Most attendees were interested in a question of answer, question and answer online seminar with ISC. Provided staff were empowered to provide useful answers to their question. So who was supposed to be arranging that? I know Mike was there and I, and I know um, Rod was there at the meeting. So they might have reports too. First Nations have been asked to provide input on draft legislation related to clean drinking water, wastewater on reserve by March 17th, 2023. There are various ways to provide input within the briefing note that I'm gonna send, which I can forward. So there's different ways of doing it. They can go online, they can do different things. There's all kinds of like little addresses and everything there. Nathan probably knows more about it than I do. Uh, so other documents that I want to forward to council are the First Nations Drinking Water Settlement, Briefing for Community and Claims Clinic. And it's very interesting. Uh, and Safe Drinking Water for First Nations Act. I can forward that too so everybody can enjoy reading all of these documents. I know how much you love reading all the documents. <laughs> So uh, that's basically my, my little report for that. I imagine Rod might be doing a larger report. 
He thinks the uh, AI, AI housing just really summit. Quickly, just really quickly on the water stuff too. We uh, just for update of the water settlement stuff. We still have yet to hear back from the administrator, which we're again um, just getting signal that it's very you know soon. So we'll be informing community as soon as we know. Yeah, that community that briefing note for community and claims clinic. That's really it's got all a lot of stuff about applying and things like that. So. Yeah, because then, and, and, I mean, obviously, the in to Nathan's earlier point of, you know, the, obviously the extension and how that got approved, you know, because I think we're going to have to do a lot of extensive outreach and making sure we have the necessary support and assistance for community members. I mean, I think well, we've, we've learned some, 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 you know, valuable lessons even through the process of day school. Uh, yeah, I think that's why build. it talks about it, uh, a clinic for the claims for people to applications and stuff. It's, it's kind of like it's telling us how we could do a clinic. Hmm. So that might work. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that. The AI, AI Housing Summit, the purpose of this was to uh, sit down and share ideas about housing and best practices and innovative ways of dealing with housing and all the issues and, and concerns that people have. They invited me to attend. Um, I sat on a panel and uh, all we talked about was they wanted to know all about our housing, how it worked, our housing needs and how it worked and stuff like that. So I just went through all of our housing, different housings that we have. We have, I never realized how much different housings we had until I started making a list. But I went through all the different kind of housings we have, um, like the individual housing, the apartments, the elders, and different things like that. I let them know how it worked, whether they were rentals or home ownership. I let them know um, the issues that we had with some of our housing, different kinds of issues. Uh, I, t I told them about the private developers we have, like Tim Squire and um, Pete Hill. Um, Habitat for Humanity, and uh, I told them about that one container house we have on Chiefswood Road. So, and I talked about how we use hotels for emergency housing. Emergency housing was discussed a lot, and they different communities mentioned the different issues they're running into. The one community that has an emergency house, they can't get the guy out of there. He's been in there now for three years and they can't get him out. Simply because the, he has nowhere to go. So that's one of the issues they're having with emergency housing. Um, and the other Communities kind of reiterated the same thing. Once you get in emergency housing, it's hard to get them out because there's no place to put them. <laughs> you know, there's no, you can't just turn them away. <laughs> so that was really something that everybody needs to think about how to fix that. Uh, I told them about our loans program, our two loans program, the, the housing loan program and the bank loan, how that worked. Um, a renovation loan program and different things and told them about all of the issues and problems and challenges we have with housing. So when I came right down to it, just about everybody all had the same issues and concerns with housing. We all had the same thing. It was really difficult, different for me though, because um, we're such a large community. The other communities, they're just small. They don't, their issue, they have the same issues as us, but they might not be as critical. Like Wata, for example, they only got 170 people living on the reserve. So their issues would be not quite as big as our issues because we have over 14,000 living on the reserve. So that was a little bit different. I learned about some very innovative ways of dealing with housing. And one of the things I liked was AIA held an elders conference uh, to hear their thoughts and concerns and possible solutions about housing. And they have a lot of, they had a lot of good ideas in their, when they did their conference. 
there were, I learned that Oneida did something called Imagicand. And what they did was they went out and secured private donations to build two houses. No government funding at all. It was all private donations that they secured from different places, different companies and different people. And they built two houses with it. Um, and it turned out really well. So they're looking at innovative ways of, because they don't have money. They have little government funding. So that worked good. And I thought we could do that. All the people that we do business with, we could be doing that. Another thing that they do different from us, I guess, is they, when they do something like this Imagican where they're building two houses, they pick the family, they pick the family first. So then they build a house to, to meet, meet, um, meet the family's needs rather than building a house and then trying to put somebody in there. So I thought that was a little bit different. They have a program, Patananega had a program called Heels to Boots and Heels is H-E-A-L, not H-E-E-E-L. And it's a domestic violence program. Uh, they built um, two, I think it was two or three houses for women going through the domestic violence. But it was all women. The, they were all women that built the houses. They, like, like they had supervisors and that, but I mean, all the women, they learned all the skills about building a house. They, they did everything. They did the whole house and they all learned different skills and, and they built it for these two families, three families. And again, the families were picked before the houses were built. They learned all kinds of skills and some of them went on to learn more skills about construction and different things. And now they're talking about building 12, they wanted to build 12 more like that. Um, and I thought that was such a really good idea to, uh, you know, get our women. And some of, the, some of the women that were building the houses had been involved with domestic violence as well. So they were all just helping each other. And, and another thing I really liked was they got to stay there for two years and they worked hard to find them a place. Uh, you know, all the counselors and the programs worked hard finding them a place. And they got to take all of the furniture with them when they left to start their new, in their new home. And I thought that was such a neat idea to do that, to let them take all the furniture like that because it's so hard when you're starting out to have them. So, um, then they had, uh, they, that um, Chippewas and Nawash, they do a lot of work with Habitat for Humanity. They've been working with them now for six years. They um, built 16 homes so far and they're working on two more. But what they're doing with Habitat for Humanity is because they were having hard times finding people to build houses, like contractors to build houses, because the same here, everybody's retiring and nobody wants, nobody's building houses anymore. So because they were having such a hard time, they started using Habitat for Humanity as the contractor for these houses. They, they did everything. Um, the, the council had to provide the money, CMHC or different monies they had but the Habitat for Humanity was the contractor for all the houses. And the families that were to go in these houses had to volunteer to work on those houses. Um, and another thing I really liked about this is they also had to take a training on how to maintain a house prior to moving into the houses. I thought that was a really good idea teaching them how to look after their house and how to maintain it and how to make sure everything's working and all that. So I thought that was a really good idea. Tiny homes, somebody has tiny homes and they had high school students build tiny homes. So high school students probably, I would assume got credits for it and they probably learned a lot about building houses. Um, the problem was they, they were having a hard time finding space but they built five houses and because they were single units, meaning only five people were gonna live in these houses, these tiny houses, they only had to 
do one septic system. They didn't have to do five different ones. So they saved a lot of um, space by just doing the one septic system for the five units. Um, Oh, and I heard I heard from the um, WATA housing manager that he said the government is going to start CMAC. I guess is going to start giving out funding for people to build granny flats, granny suites attached to their houses for uh, the elderly. And. I'm at, I'm, I'm, well, I think it's for the elderly, but because granny flats are usually for elderly people. So I thought I was going to talk to Lily to look into that to see if she'd heard about it. But that's what he was saying. They were going to start giving funding for granny flats. So that might work good with helping our elders that want to stay near their children or because you can add it onto your house, right? Onto, onto your house and, the, and they can live there. Um, so I thought that was good. And I learned other things as well, but that's briefly what what I learned. But when I'm doing a more more uh, fuller report on it, because I did learn quite a bit. Okay, so next uh, time I'll do the Chiefs Committee on Housing. I learned okay, a lot thanks. there too. <laughs> thanks. Uh, thanks for that, Helena. I think what we'll do also is there, um, you know, looking to the, any of the political pieces. I know there's some ongoing you know, projects that we have in the queue right now, uh, looking to, you know, get those, um, you know, get the excitement going to, you know, community for those projects. But I think, um, you know, looking at the other, it's always good to see what other communities are doing. I know we're, we've made the decision to move forward within our own, uh, you know, direction at Six Nations when it comes to housing authority and the work from the Chiefs of Ontario level. So I'm sure that will be further, um, further within your report at the Chiefs Committee. Uh, so I do appreciate uh, your uh, your verbal updates on both those water and housing. Sorry, did you have further one, comment? Yeah, one of the things I I realized was the majority of First Nations that were there knew, knew little about the housing transfer of housing. Hmm. They were asking me all kind of questions. I let them know that we work we're looking we're going to be considering doing our housing authority, but they knew very little about that. Transfer of housing. So I think that's even raised more questions within the engagement process for the Chiefs of Ontario. Yeah, I know. Um, Nathan? Yeah, thanks, Chief. I just wanted to provide a little subsequent to Helen's question. I think it was that last council on the emergency response um, transfer. Um, so what I what I did find out was uh, that that transfer, when it's going to happen, is going to require legislation as well. In fact, most of those pieces in that that um, that legislation that you referenced will require additional <laughs> legislation. So like health and all of those things, um, and and that's likely going to come down the pipe in the next five years. So we have to get uh, ourselves coordinated in our positions and and so forth. Thanks for that, uh, Nathan. So uh, even too with the health retreat coming up, I think that's going to be a big, um, a big, uh, you know, kind of eye opener in a sense of political advocacy needed further in that sector. Okay, so thanks, uh, Nyawa, Helen, for your uh, two verbal updates on the legislation for water as well as housing. So I'll look to a verbal uh, to accept Helen's verbal updates in addition to her written reports forthcoming. Moved by Audrey, seconder. I'll second, Sherry Lynn. Second by Sherry Lynn. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing a motion is carried. Um, the next item is under scheduling. This is hike and bike for hospice and support of the Stedman community. This is for myself uh, to attend uh, the 19th annual hike and bike for hospice on May the 7th. Looking to a mover and seconder for that. Moved by Nathan or question? No, moving. Are you biking? Okay. That's a good question. <laughs> Undecided. <laughs> uh, moved by Nathan, seconded by Greg. Did you have a question, comment, Greg? Yeah, uh, yeah, Chief. Is uh, the Stedman Community Hospice um, 
just give me some background. I, I didn't get any background on that. Is that um, yes? So uh, is that in this Bradford? Is where I'll, I'll, sure. Uh, it's the it's the nineteenth annual. I'll pass it over to Tammy for further background, Tam. Actually, what I can do, Council, is I can share that email invitation that came in out. Basically, they, it's an annual event that they've been doing for some time, and they've always tried to include Six Nations, uh, uh, political reps from Six Nations. So if anybody besides the chief wanted to attend, I'm sure they would uh, They would graciously accept that as well. Just a follow-up, uh, do we have any of our members in, in this hospice or, or util, utilize this service? We we have, yes. Oh, okay, good, thank you. Hel Helen? Isn't that the one by St. Joe's Hospital? The, the hospice, yeah, the Stedman Hospice, yeah. Yeah, yeah we have a lot, quite a few people access that, that place. Yes. Unfortunately. Okay, is there any further questions or comments? Again, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, a motion is carried. Again, well, you'll see the... Um, the other item on the bullying uh, item for the community safety, you've probably seen a few emails to that effect, so that'll be forthcoming uh, as well. Uh, so that does end our agenda for our general counsel for this evening. At this point in time, I'll look to a mover and seconder to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Moved by Nathan, seconder. Okay. Seconded by Michelle, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Uh, Nyawa to everybody for joining us this evening. And I hope everybody is enjoying uh, them. To those who are at Little NHL, it's quite the hot spot <laughs> this March breaks. So I hope everybody is uh, enjoying themselves uh, during uh, the Little NHL and their March break. Have a great evening.